Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and today we're going to build a 48 volt battery. We're gonna do that using some salvaged electric car parts. What we're gonna be using today are some old Nissan Leaf uh, cell modules. Uh, these aren't cells. The cells are actually pouches inside this tin, and there's four of them, two in series, two in parallel. So typically, uh, these are going to run at double the voltage that you might otherwise expect them to. Uh, we can charge this up in theory to 8.4 volts. And if you see right here to right here is one pair of cells. Here to here is the other pair of cells in series. So the whole thing all together is going to be over 8 volts. So what's kind of cool about this is it's sort of hard to build a 12 volt battery using 8 volt cell modules. But if we go up a bit, it works really well for a 48 volt battery system. We can put seven of these together and that's gonna be a nice voltage range for a 48 volt system. And what else is cool about 48 volts is there's actually a lot of things out there that already run at 48 volts. So uh, solar charge controllers, um, inverters for solar systems, forklifts, lawn tractors, golf carts, uh, stationary power backup units. There's a lot of things that are 48 volts. So what we're gonna do is put together seven of these in series to build that 48 volt battery pack. Now, another thing I really like about these leaf cell modules is that they're sort of human scale. Um, it's not so big and heavy that I can't lift it, that I need a engine hoist or something like that to move it around, but it's not tiny. It's not like little 18650 cells or AAA batteries. Uh, the other thing I really like is there's these four holes in the corners, one, two, three, four. So basically you just stack these up, squeeze them down with some threaded rod through the corners. These are about nine inches across, 12 inches long, and an inch and a half or so thick. So uh, they wouldn't be appropriate for something like an electric bicycle, but they'd be fantastic for something like an electric motorcycle on up, electric cars and other projects. The only downside of these is that they were known for degradation. So you're not gonna get the full capacity that these were originally designed for. But you can go to a junkyard, you can buy an entire battery pack, take it apart, build all sorts of projects out of it, or even just use what you need, sell the rest off to other people who also wanna do projects. So let's get to it, let's build a battery. Now, before I even got properly started on building the battery, I wanted to make sure that all the cell modules were at the same voltage. So what I did was I stacked them up and I connected them in parallel and let them sit overnight so that they would equalize. Now, this is an earlier photo when I was just starting to do this, but I did stack all seven up and connected all the connections in parallel. Um, these I originally pulled out of a Nissan Leaf, uh, an entire battery pack. So I have the other parts that uh, originally came with it. For example, here is a piece of metal that would have originally gone on top of the stack. It would have been a double wide stack here, so you can see it was cut. And this one would go on top of the batteries like this. And you can see there's some holes here, and that's for rods to go through to compress the entire battery pack down. Likewise, there is a piece that would go on the bottom. That is this. This one was already modified and painted for use in a different project. Um, but these holes here, I had already tapped out for quarter 20, so I can just use some uh, standard quarter 20 rod on this project. These will go on the bottom, and those cells just sit on there. Uh, then you just take some threaded rod. I got some quarter 20 here and this will just go right down through these holes in the corner and compress the entire stack down to hold the, th the whole thing together. But before doing that, uh, there are some spacers that go between each of these. And those spacers look like this. Again, these were just parts that I'm uh, reusing from the original battery pack. And basically there's a wider and a narrower one. So those will go here, again, between the cell modules. And this style goes in the back. And then you just stack them up, pretty straightforward. Now, one of the other things was in the battery pack, um, it would have had a piece like this that covers up the battery terminals. And it also has the bus bars that just click right into place here. So it was pretty slick as you'd basically just pop this on here 
put the bolts through and you're essentially done. Very, very straightforward. Now on this, we're not going to do that. And the reason why is the BMS that I'm using actually includes a board that replaces this. So let's take a look at the BMS, which I've got right here. So this BMS I got from uh, Tech Direct Inc. I mail ordered it. Um, I actually got this this past summer and then I uh, had some crazy stuff going on in my life so I didn't get to this. But if we look at this here, this is basically just a big circuit board that um, if you look here, it actually takes the place of those bus bars going positive and negative, positive to negative from one cell module to the next. And then all the traces uh, feed back to this connection right here so the BMS can sense the voltage at every single terminal um, on all the cells. So this here then plugs into the actual BMS itself through this little cable. Um, I can see resistors and switches inside for doing the battery balancing. And then we've got a nice heavy duty cable uh, for our positive and negative going to the battery. And then the output is an Anderson disconnect. And this has a 100 amp inline fuse built in. So the one thing with this is we wouldn't want to use this for uh, colossal amounts of power. Um, these nice heavy bus bars here, uh, clearly you'd be able to put a lot more power through those um, than uh, through the, these uh, circuit board uh, bus bar replacement. Uh, so just know that this is for not as high of a power system. Other than that, pretty straightforward. So let's take a look at this on the battery. So one thing I did notice with this setup is if we look at the, uh, the polarity connections that are on here, the upper right connection here is positive. The bottom left is negative. Bottom left is negative. But if we look at what I have, it's the opposite of that. Upper right is negative, bottom left is positive. So I thought, oh no, uh, I really need one more of these with the, uh, the polarity opposite. Because if you look, there's an A module and a B module. And it, the difference is just which side the positive and negative are on. Here, positive's on the left, but on this one, the negative's on the left. Uh, and I thought, oh no, Maybe I can't use this, and I thought, aha, what if I just spin this over? And now, negative matches negative, positive matches positive, uh, but there is one issue with that, and that is that right here uh, is a little further away, and we only have this really, really short uh, cable on here. Here, I'll just put an insulator here so we don't accidentally short anything. Um, but basically, with this in place, um, the cable... It, it exactly doesn't reach no matter where I put it up here. And I do want to put it on the top, not on the side or anything kind of goofy like that. So I think what I'm going to do here is instead of having uh, this piece here, which is typically the bottom, I think I'm going to make this the top and I'll just sort of quote unquote build the battery upside down. So we've got this bottom plate here. I'm putting threaded rods through and I've got it sitting on a hunk of wood just to make it a little easier so that I can extend these rods all the way through because when I'm done, I'm gonna flip this over and I'll use that little bit of extra rod as a mounting point. So I'll just put the last rod through here. And then we can start stacking the cell modules on. And again, we'll just want to double check the way I'm going to design this. I want this this way. That's positive and that's positive. So just want to double check we're getting the stack started correctly. And then now we can put these spacers in. And then the next cell module and we want to make sure they go positive, negative, positive, negative. So this one's uh, wrong. Good thing I double checked. <laughs> Here we go. So this one is red on the right, which would be correct to be next in series. This gets easier as they go, I swear.
And the last one gets this piece on top. And now I'm going to put a nut and washer on each of these. I'm just using plain washers right now. I'm probably going to double nut these. Uh, plain washers just go on so much easier than nylock washers or uh, nylock, nylock nuts. So what we're doing now is we're squeezing down the battery pack. So now with the pack squeezed together with the threaded rod, I should have shown this before that these holes actually, they wouldn't reach, they wouldn't line up before, but now that it's compressed down, I can put this right on here and all the holes line up. So now what I can do is uh, start putting in some of the fasteners. We got two different style fasteners here. One is a small bolt and that goes into the main terminals. And then there's a smaller screw and that goes into the center ones. So this part will be time-lapsed, I'm sure. Looks like these two cell modules, I didn't quite have perfectly lined up with the rest. I should have uh, checked that by pushing them all against a straight edge or something before I uh, compressed these down. So what I'm going to do now is just uh, tighten these all down by hand so I don't over torque them. The other thing to keep in mind is that this is all in series now, so you definitely wouldn't want to short between two of these bolts. Uh, before, with none of them connected, not that big of a deal, and uh, this style post really doesn't stick out. I mean, I could have covered them with electrical tape, as long as you're careful, it's fine. And then once these are all tightened down, this is going to get an insulated cover over the top. But uh, while tightening them, just be a little careful. Now I'm going to put the cover on just so I can't accidentally short any of the terminals here. Uh, but I still need to get my ribbon cable in and connect the power cables. So I'm just going to connect it with uh, one or two of these little clip-in standoffs here. Just so it's there, but I can still move it out of the way. Uh, now I'm just going to flip the whole thing over so we can work on the other end of it. Um, this is not light, but um, it's not so heavy that a person needs an engine hoist to move it or anything. Uh, it would be nice to put some handles on it before we're all done, though. So you can see when flipping it over, we got some extra threaded rod here. And the reason I did this is I thought this would make a nice little platform on the top. We want to have a place to set the actual BMS itself. This is a little goofy. So I've got this IKEA cutting board, and I just did a couple little marks of where those uh, threaded rods come to. So I should be able to just drill a couple holes through here, and then I can put this on here, and then I'll have a nice place to mount that BMS. Cutting board fits on top nicely, and then we can figure out exactly where we want to put the BMS. So I just want to make sure that the BMS goes in a place where everything reaches okay. Uh, for example, this Anderson connector, I probably want it right by the edge somewhere uh, to plug into whatever it's going to. So probably something, mm, I don't know, maybe about like that. Um, I might even just test with a, a plug first. Actually, I do have one right here, uh, just to see. Um, you know, plug it in first. Maybe it makes sense to be back a little further. You know, if it was something like that, it would maybe give support to the cable that's connecting to it. 
I don't know, that's not a bad idea, I suppose. But we just want to make sure it's easy to plug into. So if it's out by the edge, that gives us something a little more to grab onto, I guess. Probably just back a little bit from the edge. So what I can do, I think, is I'll just uh, mark those holes. And we need to make sure that this cord here reaches our white jack right there, which it does. This could even be just a little forward a little bit maybe. Make sure that reaches. And then our two main battery cables, uh, those reach just fine. But I might want to put some sort of strain relief on them. Maybe I mark some holes here that I can put some uh, maybe just zip ties right through the cutting board to hold the cables in place. I'm going to drill a pair of really small holes over here to hold this down and then uh, a little bit bigger holes to put some zip ties through the cutting board here to hold the cables in place. And I just drilled a bunch of holes in here including uh, over here putting a pair of uh, 632 screws through which should hold this in place. I just got to get uh, a couple of nuts on there tighten them down from the back and then I've got some real small little um, metric three cap screws to go through into the bottom of this, hold this in place as well. Right here I've got a box of stainless steel hex socket head cap screws and nuts assortment kit. I'm using the M3 by 12, which are these little guys right here and I'll put them through into the bottom of the board. Our BMS is mounted down nice and solid. If we look on the back, here's the six little uh, cap screws that I put in, and these are the two screws that hold in place our Anderson connector. Now um, I've got some more holes here. I'm just going to put some zip ties through those uh, to hold our cabling in place. Just going to throw some washers and nuts on here to just hold our cutting board in place. So the main thing I still have to do is connect my power cables here and plug in the BMS cable. So we'll move this out of the way. And then the first thing I'll do is I'll just want to make sure I have the right connections. Wouldn't want to accidentally plug things in wrong. So I'm looking at down here, zero is minus. Up here, 14 is positive, and if I test between the two, I should have my full pack voltage should be somewhere around, mm, I don't know, 57 volts right now, probably. Negative and positive, and make sure I'm set to DC. And what do we got here? 55.2, um, but we know we've got our polarity right, so we got to make our negative cable down here and our positive cable up here. And those are 10 millimeter. And again, generally with this sort of thing, you want it tight, but not too tight. Then up here for our positive. And then we need to plug in our cable here for all the individual voltage sensing. It is marked positive here, negative here. We've got the red and the black for the positive and negative, just so we don't plug it in upside down by accident. And then I'll get some more of these fasteners so we can put this cover on. I might want to just push this out of the way with some uh, electrical tape or something. 
this is just going to be kind of a general cover just to uh, prevent any potential short circuits from uh, our terminals here. And it looks cool. And it looks like the cable stays out of the way pretty well. So it looks like the battery is pretty much complete for now. I can put my voltmeter right here on our output. And I got our DC voltage right here. Um, so now through this jack, that will be our connector to hook up a charger or to hook up whatever we want to power off of here. We've got the terminals are all covered up. The, uh, the wires are kind of zip tied so that they're not loose and flopping around. The BMS itself is solidly connected down here. So is our little power connector. Uh, we got a 100 amp fuse over there and it looks like we're good to go. The last thing that I wanted to do here was just have some sort of a cover, uh, pretty much just keep dust off of here more than anything. Uh, so I was over at a friend's who has a laser cutter and I basically scanned one of the cell modules and then just traced out a 2D version of it and cut that on the laser cutter. This is just cardboard, which is you know, just a great test material, literally a piece of an old cardboard box, just to make sure it, you know, it fits right, um, which it does. So after doing a test cardboard piece, then we cut a piece out of acrylic. Um, what's kind of nice about that is just, uh, I got some clear acrylic here, so I'll still be able to see the parts. And if I put this on, yep, that looks pretty good. And I'll peel this backer off before finishing this. Uh, so all I'm going to do then is just add a washer on each of the, uh, the threaded rods here. And now, uh, finally going to remove the backer, figuring I'm not going to get this all scratched up anymore. And the holes are actually a little bit bigger than needed for the quarter 20 rod, um, because that was just based on the, the size of the holes in the cell modules. And then I've got some fender washers here, and those are going to go on top, uh, followed by some nuts. But I figured what I want to do is have some sort of handles to make this easier to lift. So I got um, some, uh, just some strap, just some old ratchet strap material. And what I'll do is I'll put a couple of holes in this, and then I can put it on here. I have a quarter 20 bolt here and I'm just holding it in a pair of vice grips so that I can heat it up with this torch. And the reason why I'm doing that is that the strap is a artificial material so it actually melts. Uh, what's nice about melting a hole is I don't have to worry about uh, the strap fraying at all. And it's actually just a nice straightforward way to put a correct size hole in a piece of strap like this. Just of course watching my fingers so I don't accidentally get burned. And in this case, I'm going to be using some nylock nuts uh, just because this is going to be the, the top part. Nylock nuts are great unless you got to thread them down some distance on threaded rod and then they're a huge, huge, huge pain in the butt. But I'll just make sure these are straight and then tighten them down. Now the same over on the other side, I got my strap with the holes and the ends. Put that through. And I'm using these fender washers just because uh, they're bigger. So it's kind of, it's just more surface area. So um, a little more strength on that strap is all I was going for. Now I got these nice sturdy handles. Um, they're long enough to reach together so I could grab them with one hand and this is not light. It's um, close to 70 pounds Which is it's still light enough. I can pick it up with one hand although certainly it's easier to do with two But at least it's still human scale. It's not like you need an engine hoist to lift it or something like that So now that we've got our battery pack built uh, there's still two questions one is how are we going to charge it? And then secondly, what are we going to use it for? Now, of course, there are lithium battery chargers you can just run out and buy. So that would be certainly be an option is just a 14S lithium battery charger. Now, another option, something that I've had good luck with, 
is actually using uh, Meanwell brand power supplies. Uh, they have a series of power supplies that's really designed for like uh, LED street lights and that sort of thing. Uh, they're sealed up against the weather and they have uh, some adjustments for both current and voltage. So one of these could simply be set to that correct maximum voltage uh, and just plugged in and, and let it charge. Uh, I use some of these with great success on electric motorcycles. Um, always been very happy with them. If you see an HD, this one happens to be a 36 volt, so we need the next higher uh, voltage style for charging our 48 volt battery pack. Now, the other thing I've had kicking around, uh, this is an old solar charge controller that I've got. Uh, what's kind of nice about this one is it will do 12, 24, or 48 volt battery systems. And if I take off this cover, underneath there's some little adjustments with potentiometers, so you can really tweak those settings. So this would work really well with a pair of 30 volt nominal solar panels, so kind of the type normally associated with grid tie systems. But if you took two of them, put them in series, connect one to the next, you'd have about 60 volts, bring that into here, take the output from here to the battery. And oh, look at this. It already has an, one of those little Anderson disconnects from uh, the last project that I happened to be using this on. So this would be a great setup for actually solar charging a lithium battery. And frankly, that's what solar people do for household battery backups. So we've got our battery, we could charge it from wall power, we could charge it from solar power, but how do we want to use it? I think for me, one of the best ways of using it is for running an inverter, and that would let me use uh, AC wall power out in the field, or say if there's a blackout at my house, I'd have a backup power supply. And I've actually done that before with uh, an old UPS, which I repurposed. Uh, I was kind of all dinged up and didn't have batteries, but hooking up a 48 volt battery source to it, uh, and actually, I used my old 48 volt electric motorcycle for doing that. Worked really well, I could actually run my whole house off of it, and all I needed was just a cord with the Anderson disconnect on the end to be able to do that. Worked pretty slick, I, I was pretty happy with that system. Now another thing we could use a 48 volt battery pack for is running DC motors. We've already done that before, things like uh, running a lawn tractor, which was actually powerful enough to be able to pop wheelies. That was a fun little project. But another way of doing things is we could use a electric motor to run a hydraulic pump. So we could hook up that battery pack to something like this and pump hydraulic fluid around. That would allow us uh, to be able to do things like maybe build a battery powered uh, log splitter. That might be kind of cool. Or, I don't know, maybe run hydraulics on an electric tractor. We'll see. I hope you like these videos. As always, please read the video description. I have a lot of links and other information in there. Uh, you might have some questions that are already answered right there in the description, so please check that out. If you like these videos, please share them with your friends, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, we are on Patreon and would love if you would support us there as well. Otherwise, swing by 300mpg.org for more do-it-yourself clean transportation and renewable energy projects. Until next time, stay charged up.